Hi, everybody. Today, I'm going to talk to you about Medusa, a project I've been working on the last few months at CryptoNet. I'm going to talk about uh, threshold network and on-chain data management. Um, so let's drive right in. What is Medusa? Medusa, I'd like to describe it as a toolbox to do many things, uh, to do programmatic access control, uh, which is the first application we're going to focus on on-chain. Uh, time encryption, one has begun, and many other stuff. Basically, you can think of it as Medusa allows uh, smart contract or any application, but we're focusing on uh, decentralized application today to hold the private key uh, via a threshold network. We have a demo of bad access control we're going to showcase later on um, on Gurley, a firm. And uh, let's dive right in what it, what it means, all of this. So, Let's take a, take, take a step back and what is the problem exactly? Like right now, in terms of uh, private information, there is nothing private basically on, on chain. Uh, so everything you send is kind of public. Um, and so the smart contract acts as a third private uh, third party, but it cannot hold anything private to its own. So it's a complete public, uh, state public uh, third party. And so that means the smart contract cannot sign or perform any kind of operation uh, on chain. It's uh, just uh, attesting and running some logic, but not logic which includes uh, private information. What do we want to do if we could have the possibility of having a smart contract which has a private key? Then we could do many things. We could do, for example, one thing, but which are the focus of this talk right now is uh, programmatic access control. So, for example. Uh, you can access to this document if you show you have this NFT during this event, or uh, I will give uh, this access to this mailing list to all ads uh, protocol at AI user, or uh, anything, any condition you can actually prove um, in a smart contract or in other ways. Um, so general concept of on-chain vaults. And so how does this work in the context of Medusa? So, Medusa is kind of a network by itself, okay, a network of nodes. Uh, it's a threshold network, so that means uh, there's uh, some kind of uh, assumptions here about uh, the honesty of the network. So we need more than 50%, can be any threshold to be honest, and in this case, the network will uh, hold the key without anybody knowing it. So no, no nodes of Medusa will know the key, and nobody will know the key, but yet the smart contract can use it. Um, it's very, and when you integrate this design into the uh, blockchain mindsets, then you kind of have this oracle-like design, kind of similar to chaining for those we know. So when the smart contract wants to, for example, that, let's say one operation you can do with a private key is decrypt something. So the smart contract can see a decryption request to the Meza network, and then second, the Meza network will decrypt it and push back to plain text. Okay, so. You really have to think about the Minza as an extension of the smart contract in this way. And so what you can do with it now is you can do things like programmatic access control in a very easy manner. Um, so basically, the, imagine plenty of applications that needs to have access control, like for example, document sharing or private mailing list or even the music platform, whatever. Um, they, they delegate their, their, let's say, their key to Medusa in, in some sense. They don't do anything, but when they use Medusa, it's kind of similar to like, they have the key that they get to Medusa, and they ask the Medusa uh, network to operate on their behalf. And so any smart contract in Medusa, there's no registration. You just say, hey, Medusa, decrypt this thing, and that's about it. It's like one call. Uh, there are kind of two modes about Medusa, like you can have a global decryption where the Medusa network completely decrypts the ciphertext and push it on chain, so you now you are the rebuild your message. Um, but this is this can be uh, useful for applications like, uh, I don't know, bets or auctions, things like this. But you can have also, and this is the focus of the demo that we have today, uh, about uh, focus on that re-encrypting ciphertext. So if this is what we need for access control management, like the document sharing, um, uh, we request that you, that the Medusa network decrypts this document explicitly for Bob. So it requests the decryption for Bob and the Medusa network, instead of decrypting it, we just re-encrypt the document towards Bob. So how does it work, let's say, from end to end as user, uh, the user flow? So let's say, imagine we have Alice, which has a new super top secret document. First thing it does is encrypting it, okay, right? So now it has a cipher text. Second thing it does, uh, Alice will submit the uh, document or the, the the key of the encryption. It will submit the uh, encrypted key uh, that lead to the encryption of the documents, and it will lead to an event on Medusa. So now the Medusa network is aware that there is this encryption uh, document somewhere, 
but it doesn't do anything yet, right? And later on, it can be one week, one month, one year afterwards. Uh, then the bond comes in and say, hey, I want to read your documents. Uh, and so now it goes to the document sharing smart contract and, and say, hey, I want to read. And now the document sharing pl platform needs to say, okay, is Bob authorized or not? And this is a custom logic. Any Anybody could come code his own custom logic. It could be if Bob is more than 18 years old or if he's take the end of if or somewhere, like it can be anything. And then if the Bob has uh, the right to access the document, then the document sharing platform will ask the, the decryption, the re-encryption to add to the media network. And so now the media network will read everything, will read the decryption request and the submission event from ICE, and then it will re-encrypt. So it will never decrypt the ciphertext. At no point in time, the, the encryption will be revealed, uh, will be uh, read. And so then once that does meet internally, it will push the, the re-encryption on-chain, to the Medusa smart contract, which will push it to the document sharing. And then Bob will see, oh, okay, my re-encryption re re is ready. He downloads it on the browser, or on his command line interface, whatever, and then you do a local decryption. So then he can read the document by himself locally on his computer. And that's kind of the whole workflow we've been working on right now uh, on this Medusa project. Uh, right now, there's uh, only me for this last month, and we just hired somebody that will help me on the smart contract on the back end side, Jonathan Isselman. And then we have a working proof of concept codes. Uh, you can check out uh, the code, which is not completely public yet, so you need to ask me first if you want to have uh, invites. It's based on Rust uh, for all the back end and the solidity right now because we deploy the proof of concept code on Girly. Um, and the nodes communicate via lip P2P with the running server, uh, pretty basic stuff. We have a demo, which I'm going to show you later. On the future, we want to expand a little bit the use cases. So like I said at the beginning, there is um, access control, but we can do also runners beacon, we can do time encryption where uh, uh, upon any condition or witness encryption, general witness encryption, or upon any condition, then we reveal something. Uh, we can also do add privacy on top of what are the condition for somebody to be able to ask the decryption. Uh, this could be private as well. So you could not reveal that your name is Bob and that you're more than 18 years old, but anybody could verify that at least you are more than 18 years old and you are somebody. Um, and MPC could, could help there. And as also we have a kind of a, we're trying to have some kind of research acts on the extending and the scalability of the basic uh, cryptographic primitive that Medusa use, which is fresh low cryptography. And uh, as such as this, we have a first iteration. Uh, we made a first um, uh, proof of concept code about uh, uh, DKG. So the underlying cryptographic primitive, which can run with hundreds of nodes, uh, which is not uh, familiar uh, now. And will lead to maybe a production thing later on, but we need to decide where we want to go. And so this is a very uh, uh, brewing project. And if you're interested to hear more and participate, or there's plenty of things to do, so don't hesitate to uh, contact me. And now I'm going to show you a quick demo. This is the ACL contract, the access control list contract, where there's only reader and writer roles. I write a, a text, a cipher, something. It encrypts the the chain. And there's, there's a reader rule I can show you later that will try to decrypt, ask to decrypt. And this is the main design contract. So, Let's say I want to type a small secret here. Uh, okay, so I play with my MetaMask. Oh, I confirm, everything is good. This is on Google uh, Ethereum testnet. Uh, now I will switch to a reader one. So I'm just switching keys. Um, up. And now I can read, I read, I can read all the ciphertexts. These are all the ciphertexts, submission time, submission like this. And now I will ask to decrypt uh, this one. For example, I just made one here, you see. Uh, I will ask to decrypt this one. So again, it's a transaction that goes on chain. I ask to decrypt. So my keys is whitelisted already on the access control list uh, smart contract. So I can already read anything I want. This is a very basic uh, demo. But the idea is that anybody can code his own rules. Like there's no, it's just a Medusa is just a toolbox for uh, people to use on top of it. And now we submitted the the transaction. And now we're waiting for the Oracle results. And in the meantime, because it takes a little bit of time because uh, we are on Girly, I can show you that there are four participants in the network right now. There have been four nodes that are holding the private key and Medusa. These are all the interesting addresses. 
and there is a distribute public key to which one which I encrypts. And here, uh, sign message to I mean, Uber, Banana, and that's it. So I, you see, I can decrypt uh, from the border as well. And that's it for me. Thank you, everyone.